Good morning and welcome to TechSteps Q2 2021 presentation. My name is Børge Astrup and I am the new CEO of TechStep. Together with our CFO Marius Drevelin and our CCO Erik Haugen, we will take you through our Q2 results. We will also host a Q&A session at 10 a.m. today. Information about how to participate in the Q&A session will be given at the end of this presentation. You will also find details on how to join on our web page. I would like to start by giving a brief introduction of myself before I move on to the more exciting part of why I joined TechStep. My career has always been about delivering great customer value regardless of what position I have held. I started as a sales consultant in Mammut Asa and worked my way up to being sales director. Mammut was acquired by Visma in 2011 and in Visma I held the role as director of finance and operation, but still with a strong customer focus as the leading principal. In 2015, I joined Intelcom to lead the cloud-based contact center division, where we de also decided to do a demerger and to create Puzzle. We built Puzzle to an international, fast-growing software company, where we grew the revenue from 165 million Norwegian kroners to 400 million Norwegian kroners, with 90% of the revenue as recurring. This put Puzzle on the map as the industry-leading cloud-based contact center vendor in Europe. I'm very excited to join TechStep to deliver great customer value by making work mobile. TechStep offers a solution for mobility that is relevant for all businesses, a solution that's gradually transforming to more software and in addition, more industry-specific solution also driven by software. I believe efficient mobile technology provides great opportunities for people, their organization and for TechStep. And going forward, I will focus on delivering great customer value, increasing sales and to make software and recurring revenue the main driver for growth. And to do so, TechStep has built a unique platform. TechStep has over the last few years focused all its time and effort to seize the position as the leading managed mobility services provider in the Nordics. TechStep has acquired and integrated several companies on the way and have invested heavily in developing software with own IP. And it's no longer the traditional mobile reseller it used to be. And although TechStep has had a great transformation. We are still on a transformational journey. Software and recurring revenue are becoming a larger part of our business. And I can't wait to further develop this part of the business to better our services to our customers, stakeholders and to TechStep. This will help us to deliver on our growth journey. A journey that today is even more exciting than ever before due to TechStep holding the position as the number one managed mobility service provider in the Nordics with a unique platform for growth and a European expansion opportunity. Now I would like to hand over to Marius so he can take you through the highlights of the second quarter of 2021. Thank you, Berge. We have full focus on selling value-creating MMS solutions to our customers to drive gross profit going forward. And we look forward to working closely with you to further make this possible. For the second quarter, gross profit was 114 million, up 46% from 78 million last year, and EBITDA adjusted was 13 million, compared with 17 million for the same period last year. For the first half of this year, gross profit was 228 million, up 44% from 158 million last year. EBITDA adjusted was 27 million, down from 29 million last year. 
The results are influenced by our ongoing transition away from one of transactional sales towards a recurring revenue business model, as well as continued investments in the transformation of the company. To the right, we show the full year and last 12 months gross profit and EBITDA adjusted to show the development over the last three years, less affected by seasonal variations. We signed six new MMS contracts in Q2 with an estimated value of 77 million. We successfully raised 100 million in a private placement to fund the Pharmac acquisition, which closed in the beginning of the third quarter. And last but not least, we appointed Børge Astrup, an experienced software services leader and entrepreneur, as the new CEO of TechStep after the close of the quarter. There is no doubt that our MMS solution offers great value to our customers. We can see this by the fact that more and more customers are choosing our MMS solution. Since inception in late 2019, we have won 38 contracts with a total value of 216 million in revenue to be delivered over the next years. In the time ahead, we will focus on making our value proposition even clearer for both existing, new and potential customers to ensure that they can capitalize on the advantages of choosing our managed mobility services offerings. Eric will now take you through some of the key wins in the second quarter. Thank you, Marius. In the second quarter, we signed six new managed mobility services contracts with new and existing customers in both Sweden and Norway. The contracts are signed with both public institutions and private enterprises, and they represent 7,300 new managed devices with an estimated total value of 77 million over the next four years. This proves that the Nordic companies understand the increased value of our proposition as the number of both products and services per contract are increasing and thus also the value for TechStep. It's always exciting to talk about new customers and their stories. And here are a couple of examples of newly signed contracts in the second quarter. The Norwegian Public Postal Service is a long-standing customer of TechStep and one who has embraced the potential of mobile technology early. Posten is in its second extension of its mobility program where postmen and women use iPhones with a series of apps that, for instance, assist them in finding the right delivery addresses. This results in more efficient mail handling, lower costs and more satisfied customers. Now Posten has chosen TechStep's flow concept for handling the device lifecycle and asset management of their large number of devices in the field. This will increase value by enabling Posten to reduce the total cost of ownership and administrative complexities, while at the same time the employees maintain the benefits provided by the overall MMS solution. Our Swedish subsidiary Optidev is long known for designing, building and running managed mobility services solutions for various enterprises. Optidev is particularly strong within the transport and logistics sector and is therefore with pride we enter into a new agreement with Stu Stockholm's Lokaltrafik, as they take advantage of TechStep's full offering including advisory services, platform management and asset management. TechStep will provide a complete offering, including creating a new ticketing app, as well as providing the full operational support and maintenance for the complete solution once it is launched into production. Software is becoming an increasingly important component in TechStep's MMS offering, both for our customers and as a driver for higher profits. In May, we added significant new software capabilities with the acquisition of Polish software company FAMOC. The acquisition of FAMOC has three clear opportunities for TechStep. One, by adding capabilities to our own IP for the MS offering, we can design and deliver better products with better value to new and existing customers in the Nordics. We will optimize our costs 
by replacing existing third-party components with our own IP. And finally, it will unlock our European expansion. With FAMOC, we can offer a complete, automated and fully integrated MMS platform, which gives users and enterprises device and cost control, enhanced security and lifecycle management. All within one dashboard, all at a low cost. We also see great opportunities to take TechStep's extensive know-how in mobility and bring that to FAMOC's existing partners and customers in Europe. Especially, the asset management and device lifecycle capabilities of our Origo platform are of high interest and relevance. The combined forces of the two companies will see significant MMS opportunities in a vastly expanded market with a serious competitive advantage. TechStep has a fantastic customer base with strong opportunities for additional sales. We see that more and more of our Nordic customers understand our customer value proposition and increase their adoption of our managed mobility services offering. And with the recent acquisition of software company FAMOC, we will be able to enhance our offering towards Nordic customers, as well as broaden our customer base and opportunities beyond Norway, Sweden and Denmark. I will now hand back to Marius, who will take you through the financials of the second quarter. Marius? Thank you, Eric. In the second quarter this year, revenue increased from 238 million to 325 million year on year. More importantly, however, gross profit increased by 46% this quarter from 78 million to 114 million and 44% from the first half last year to the first half this year. This is due to an increase in our hardware as a services portfolio and contributions from the acquisitions we made in the fourth quarter last year. EBITDA adjusted decreased from 17 million to 13 million. This is mainly due to an increase in recurring revenue which is spread over a longer period. Building a recurring revenue business model is key for us as it adds steadier, higher quality and higher margin revenue. However, during the transformative phase that we are in, we are pursuing longer and larger full service MMS contracts rather than smaller one-off contracts which typically reduce revenue short term. Depreciation increased as a result of growth in hardware as a service. We have a prudent approach on the residual value of the assets. In some of the early contracts, which have now matured, we are already seeing evidence of this. The main part of the hardware as a services portfolio will start to mature towards the end of next year. Amortization on intangible assets relates to acquisitions and development costs. Amortization is non-cash and completed by 2026. The cash position was 154 million following the proceeds of the private placement in May, as well as the bank loan to cover the Pharmac acquisition, which closed early in the third quarter. Thus, the net interest-bearing debt was 64 million at the end of the quarter. The gross profit for the last 12 months increased from 412 million in the first quarter to 448 million in the second quarter this year. There was an increase in the hardware as a service portfolio as we continue the transformation from traditional one-off deliveries to recurring revenue. Moreover, there was an increase in own software and advisory and services driven by acquisitions and increased product adaptation from existing customers. All of these are important drivers for gross profit going forward as we continue to focus on rolling out our MMS offering. Here we see the development in Proforma gross profit and EBITDA adjusted, including acquisitions we see a continued growth in gross profit. However, we also see the effect of the transition to recurring revenue 
partly replacing transactional sales. Moreover, we continue to make investments over the PL. We are well underway of growing our recurring revenue portfolio, and we expect this to continue to grow going forward. We remain firm on our focus to increase profitability in the long term through operational leverage and an increase in software and IP-led revenues. We had 64 million in reported ARR at the end of the quarter, including the Pharmac acquisition, which closed early in the third quarter, the ARR was 93 million. Of this, 64 million relates to our MMS offering. The overall gross margin on our own software is 95%. We had 50,000 users on our own Origo platform, which is up 69% year on year and 16% year to date. Going forward, we will focus on rolling out the MMS offering to drive ARR growth and Pharmoc will be important in achieving this. In the quarter, we maintained a solid balance sheet with 47% equity ratio. Tangible assets are mainly goodwill of 567 million and customer relations and technology of 143 million. Non-current interest-bearing debt includes acquisition loans of 71 million and seller's credit of 49 million. Other current liabilities include deferred revenue on the hardware as a service contracts of 132 million. At the end of this quarter, the cash position was 154 million and the interest bearing debt was reduced to 64 million. This is due to the proceeds from the pri private placement we, we completed in May and the acquisition loan for the Pharmac acquisition. The acquisition closed in the beginning of Q3, thus the net interest bearing debt is estimated to increase by 90 million following the closing of the Pharmac acquisition. The cash flow from operations was 19 million. This includes an improvement in networking capital of 17 million, as well as an increase in deferred revenue from the hardware as a service portfolio. Net investment cash outflow of 39 million includes leased out equipment of 23 million and investments in software and IT development of 17 million. Net financing of 109 million includes net proceeds from the private placements and net borrowings of 12 million offset by lease repayments of 5 million. Net cash in cash and cash equivalent was positive at 90 million for the second quarter. I will now move on to the outlook and the summary. Going forward, we are targeting strong growth with our MMS offerings. We intend to double the number of users on our cloud solution, Origo, and sign more than 30 new MMS contracts within the next 12 to 18 months from the start of this year. When it comes to the financials, we believe our gross profit growth will be in line with what we have said previously and that the gross profit to EBITDA conversion will rebound to our targeted levels. We expect development capex to be higher than the long-term ambition, driven by the focus on software development and the need to modernize our existing business systems. This will lead to increased efficiency, scalability and improved profits long-term. Berge will now give you some closing remarks. So to summarize, we have successfully raised 100 million to fund the pharma acquisition in May. It's also very positive to see that the gross profit growth continues and that we continue to sign MMS contracts. This quarter, 
we have signed six new MMS contracts with a total of 7,300 managed devices. The total value of these contracts are 77 million. In addition to increased adoption with existing customers. Techstep is in a very exciting market and holds a unique position. We are transforming the business from transactional to recurring revenue, which also provides our customers with a better value. The Pharmac acquisition also supports this transformation. We can now deliver our complete MMS offering through our own IP, meaning that we are able to deliver better value to our customers. And we are also able to optimize our cost. Pharmoc is also key for us to unlock our potential in Europe. Our focus forward is to increase the momentum of TechStep, seizing the opportunity that lay ahead of us. We will focus on simplifying our offering to make it easier for our customers to understand and choose the right package for their needs. And when buying services from TechStep, we support our customers to buy services and products with a lower environmental footprint in a more sustainable way. We invite you to participate in our Q&A session at 10 a.m. today. Please feel free to submit your question in advance in email or directly in the Teams webinar. We hope to see you there. And with that, we conclude today's presentation. Thank you all for watching.